less than more than five seconds, you have to get the capital prize. Yes, and if you stay on more than, more than two seconds, you'll get captured money. Good girl. Don't seem to be worried. Hey, Neil, you want the loan of my rope to tie yourself in the saddle? Nope. You'll need it to tie yourself up with when I win this first drive. All right, let's go. <laughs> crazy about you, but he can't tell you about it. Well, why can't we get along? Because you're too much alike. He's an hour late. Now, why can't he try to please me? Maybe he would if you do to him what you just did to me. Tell him that he's all right. I'd like to. But I can't. Hello, Dad. Oh, hello, young lady. Hi, Mr. Williams. Hello, Gwen. The windows in here. This place is like a museum. Everything in it is stuffy. Uh, you tell that son of mine if he comes in here sometime today that I'm out. Very well, Mr. Gibson. <laughs> I'm not interested in people that don't keep their appointments. Now, don't start throwing things when he comes in. Your son is after home, tell you. <laughs> Why don't you try being nice to him and him? I would if he'd get off that horse of his long enough to settle down to something worthwhile. Well, you still want him on a saddle, your saddle, the desk. Carry on for the glory of Gibson and Stark, commission merchant. Mm. Tried to make a monkey out of me yesterday. Mm. Wait till he comes in now here. Now hold your temper. Oh, I'll try. Did you promise me something? Yes, I'll try. Why? Will you let Neil first? Hold your temper and be quiet. 
I promise. I wish he had your good sense. I haven't any either, but you're not on to me. Now, remember what you promised. Let Neil speak first and hold your temper. Shake. Okay. You're late, as usual. Oh, only an hour. Have you seen Bert today? No, have you? Yes. He dropped over to the throat again this morning. Turn him down again? Yes. He was too full of devotion and liquor. Ah, you two make me tired. He can take his choice. Me or Scotch. Well, what do you want me to do? Two things, will you? Sure. First, find Bert and see that he stops drinking. This might go on for days. Eight drinks and he starts looking for Max Bear. What's wrong with that? Oh, do it, I ask. Where are you, Okay. Found it. Wait a minute. Now for the second place. Hold your temper and let Dad speak first. It'll be tough. I'll do it. your horse. Suck in the elevator. Were you ever on time in your life? Yep. Yesterday on top of that throne. Under your age, I stuck on him twice that long. Did you ever win a prize? Don't argue with me. What should I do? You listen to me. Shoot. Instead of riding Broncos to show off, how about making a job of it? It's a job now. Go out on one of my ranches. Manage it for me. You mean take orders from you? Why not? That's out. I don't want a job that has any responsibilities. You never did. That's what's wrong with you. Maybe so. You're too lazy. You've no consideration for anybody but yourself. Now listen. I've heard all along. You're my one bad investment. I spent plenty on you, and you turned out to be just so good. That's telling me where I stand just a little bit raw. We'll let it go for now. But someday you're going to apologize for that no good crack. Not me. Oh, yes, you will. I guess that's all. You bet it is. Good day, sir. And watch my smoke. Now, you, you take this pickle. Same idea, nature's laws. Starts out in this life the same as you and I. Yeah, and peppy. Shut up, man. Oh, boy, boy. Yeah, as it starts to grow, it starts to develop water. Who likes what? It can't do anything about it. It has nothing to say. It has one chance, one hope, and that is to become a cucumber. Hey. Right. Come on. 
out, boys. Can't have the cops from here again this week. Come on. Come on. Come on. I 
think I'm going to like it out here. Come on. Hey, Duke. Uh, Duke, give me a towel, will you? Hurry up, Duke. Give me a towel. Switch. Yeah, I'm right. Right. Ah. Uh. Boy, feel better now. You look better. Oh, get over there. Get over there. Clear. Uh, lay off of that. Who's doing this? Uh, you can get your time. What do you mean? You heard me. You're through. Want a job? Yeah. You've got it. Good enough. I think I'll send you some clothes. I could use them. You could wash your face, too. Coming along. How are things going? He'll be all right. Somebody's been lying to me. How do you mean? Oh, I, I know it's like you to keep trouble from me, but I know you're having tough going. With the men complaining and leaving and lying down on the job. Who's been telling you that? I know men. No pay, no work. Well... Some of the men resent being brought to girl, but they're going to learn to like it. Who are the two strangers? I think they're a vaudeville team. They fell off a of freight and dinner clothes. Well, who'd they say they were? Sir Walter Raleigh and the Duke of Wellington. Well, maybe they are, I think. I hired Sir Walter. Can he ride? Great. I don't know about horses. Well, how about the Duke? I'll put him mending fences. He'll get his dress shirt kind of dirty. Uh, Doc Well says I'll be at least another month like this. Great help I am. Now, don't worry. I won't if that bank comes across with a loan. If it doesn't, we're through. Things will work out. I hope you're right. I hope I am, too. Kind of nice. He sure was. I mean the place around. Oh, I don't suck in funny, Dave. Yeah, especially when you don't get no wages. I'm moving to the next stop, and I hear Stark is paying more dough. I'm sticking here. Old man Wary treated me all right. Ah, he's broke. Gibson and Stark are the big shots around here. Gibson and Stark? Run of the next wave? Say, what's the name of this town? Marlow. Wait a minute. Sure. Dad's got two places in this country. Now I remember. The next town is Glenover. They own a ranch there, too, and stock his partners running them. Meaning what? Don't you remember? Dad said I was no good. Bad investment. Another train. No, no, a job. Tomorrow morning... You and I start throwing a monkey wrench in a farm called Gibson and Stark. You know his partner, Stark? Never saw him. He don't know me. Even up. I'll get a monkey wrench. You start throwing it, and don't miss. Trying to start something again, eh? Yeah. What? Uh-oh. Here comes the big sheep, ma'am. Where did you ever punch cattle? Chicago Stockyard. I believe it. I suppose you did yours on a merry-go-round. No, I don't like wild horses. Now, from now on, you wash dishes. Can I wear my spurs? Maybe you think he can't wash dishes. Show him your diploma. Don't try to kid me. I'm... This boy is the champion dishwasher of the Middle West. And don't forget my Eastern record, too. That's right. 
He holds the championship dishwashing belt. Go on, tell him who I am. Dorgan, you're looking at that soap stud kid. Have you got a diploma? Why? You giving some away? I'm giving you a chance to get one. From now on, you wait on table. From now on, you get the soup down the back of your neck and hot. Come on, soap stud. Hello. You know, I can't understand you, Soap Stud. Why, I remember when you used to balance two plates on your chin while you kept three in the air at the same time. <laughs> that was when I was young and ambitious. Hey, come on, oh, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, and take it and soap. Yeah, get in there. The wolves are howling. Hey, what's the delay out there? How about the last one for you? Go down and broke a leg. You got a lot of work to do. Here, you haven't got me yet. Come on, make it snappy. Hey! Everything you break, you got to pay for. Well, I can have a lot of fun around here for a dollar and a half. You know, Pastor Vizul, I must be slowing up. I used to be able to juggle three cups and keep ten plates in the air at the same time. Wait till I show you this plate. I don't know what you called me, but if it's what I think it is, you're asking for a punch in the nose. That's exactly what I said. Are you casting reflection on my character? Two times is that what I said. Riding food. Well, that may be your way of branding, but it isn't the way we do it in the Argentine. Just how do you do it down there, soap suds? We fight our initials into them. That calls for good teeth. Yeah, that'll let you out. I got as good teeth in the outfit. Let's see him, and I'll tell you your age. Get it, horsey? <laughs> Listen, Eustace, if you were a man's size, I'd cuff you into a beak and stick you into the ground. Now, don't worry about my size. Just start cuffing. I'm saving that up for a friend of yours. And when I start cuffing him, he'll crawl off in this place on his hands and knees. Oh, yeah? I just love to be cuffed. Especially by someone who really can cuff. Well, you... Oh, you're just a great big naughty boy. <laughs> Say you're just a great big naughty boy. <laughs> I'll get you for this. Yeah, you just cuff him to a peak, don't you? We 
have a new foreman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? Who? Sir Walter Raleigh. How come? Jorgen's gone. Jorgen? I never thought he'd walk out. He didn't. The men laughed him out. I figured Jorgen would always hold a whip hand. Sir Walter took his whip away from him. But we don't know anything about this new man. Do? So do the men. They like him. Do you think they'll work for him? Yes. He has a way with him. But is he a cattleman? I didn't ask him. Just made him for me. Well, maybe it's all right. But I'd like to see him. I'll send him in. Uh, what's the letter with that? Huh? What letter? The one you did. Oh, that. Yes, that. We're up against it. Can't see my way out. Let's see this, Sir Walter. I'll get him. Ah, glad to know you, sir. Ann here says you're all right. I said I thought he'd be all right. Why, Ann, I thought you... I'll leave you with Mr. Raleigh and... uh... What is your name? Oh, I guess Raleigh's as good as any. I think so. What do you say, Ann? He's your foreman. And you've stepped into a tough spot. The bank refuses to renew my notes. And I owe wages. Unless we can deliver our cattle in Kansas City on the 1st. I'm through. Now, what do you say? We'll deliver them. How? Give me a free hand. You back me up. We'll make the grade. I wish I had your confidence. Look, place a bet on me. I'm a long shot. When they win, they're good. I'll pay you clear across the board. Now then, what should I know? It's Gibson and Star. They want this place. They've corralled everything else around here. They control the bank. What kind of a number is this, Stark? Blake. The kind of a person who always smiles. Well, he cuts her throat. I know. He kind of cures his fingernails, too. How about this partner of his, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Gibson? He's a wall-eyed, three-legged, milk-fed pirate. His father must have been a burglar and his family a pack of wolves. I'd like to meet this old pirate. He won't. He never comes out here. No, he hides in his den. He rolls the balls and Stark throws them. No one has ever tried throwing them back. How's your arm? I haven't had any complaints. Then start throwing. I couldn't eat there for you now with the one leg, but my money's on you. You'll collect on the first. Good night, sir. Good night. Right, Ann. I like him, don't you? Well, he's all right, I guess. What do you mean, you guess? Well, well, he's, well, he's altogether too sure of himself. Well, that's what I like about him. I don't. He'll do this and he'll do that. Why, you think he was running the place. Well, isn't that why you hired him? Yes. Then why in the... He won't give me any orders. Has he tried to? No. But I feel that he's going to. Important additions to holdings we need out here. Best wishes, Thomas Stark. Gibson and Stark. Yes, sir. All right, read it. To John Brower, President Traders Bank, Denver, Colorado. My dear John, I also recommend your judgment in not renewing the Adam Ware note. If you agree, we will foreclose on you. It will make an important addition to holdings we need out here. Best wishes, Thomas Stark, Gibson and Stark. It's nice to have you tell me that my name is Stark. It's also interesting to learn that the firm name is Gibson and Stark. You requested that I read it, sir. The letter, yes. You don't have to read me my family history. I'm sorry, sir. I suppose they taught you that in college, too. No, sir. I wish I could find out something they did teach you. 
That is something useful and practical. I was a talented good student. Yeah, they overlook the fact that you're just naturally done. I resent that, Mr. Stark. My, my. I won't sleep tonight. Why do you keep me here if you dislike me so? You hand me the last. Those agricultural colleges are the baloney. If he ain't, answer me this. Why is it a red cow eating green grass gives white milk? I don't know. No, and neither do any of your professors. There's one for your book. You and your diplomas. <laughs> Got those book balance up to date? Yes, sir. Hello, Dorgan. How's everything, boss? Fine with me. Know where I can get a good man in your place? Now, listen. What good are you anyway, except to draw your pay every month? I was all right until that dude got in my hair. He got in deeper than your hair. He made a monk of you, ran you off the place. Where'd you get your information? I've had you covered from the start. I didn't touch. No? You've been doing a lot of talking. Suppose and I start doing some. Who will you talk to? Your partner, old Gibson. What are you hanging around here for? Get out of here and keep your ears out of the mud. What did you mean by that remark about talking to Gibson? You said I was crooked, didn't you? I said I didn't trust you. Old Gibson does trust you. Then what? You've been crossing him, and I know it. You know what? You've been buying up a lot of acreage out here. Both be for the firm. If you think so, start running me out of here. I got it on you. I got plenty. You start anything with me, and I start yelling. And suppose I go along with you. You get the wear ranch. I get me that dude, Raleigh, and I don't start yelling. How do we operate? If wear can't deliver in Kansas City by the first, he's through, isn't he? Yes. If there's no cattle left for the first, what does he deliver? He don't. That's my idea. Do I stay? If you can do that. I can. You're on. And get this. Nobody's fooling anyone. I don't trust you any more than you do me. That's fine. Now we start eating. Langdon, you and your men ride to the forks and see if any of the wire men are around. We'll run off their cattle. Meet us at Tontin Basin and we'll change brands there. I got it. Go over that north slope and see if you can locate those stairs. Okay, I'm on my way. What'd you say that last count was, George? I'd say there's around 700 heads missing. Give me some sticks. What? Some sticks. You know, 
a couple of pieces of wood to make some splits with. Now, you just hold it right there, little fella, and we'll have you all fixed up here in a minute. Pour me some water. Now, let me look at it again. Brown hair. do the work, she kisses you. They don't like grouse. They'll come around to it. Pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? I know dogs. I could say something, but I won't. I could do, and I will. After this, don't interfere in my business. Here, hold the puppy, will you? When did I interfere in your business? Yesterday. I told Andrews and Foster to ride fence. You countermanded my orders. I didn't think it was necessary. Then we check up those lost cattle of your cups, not mine. Here, hold it. I was wrong. You were. Don't let it happen again. May I carry you into the house? Yeah, I guess it'll be all right. Is this your shirt? Well, I wouldn't be tearing up anybody else. I suppose the laundry sent you the wrong one. No, that's mine. Is that safe? Yeah, that's all. Thank you, Miss. I came over to see you about. Funny if ours were mixed up, wouldn't it? What do you mean? Well, if someone ran off our stock and rebranded it, it'd be kind of hard to prove. Well, whoever did get away with it, with me. Nor me. Where are my cattle, Stark? You wouldn't suggest that I know something about that stolen stock, would you, Will? No. Oh, no. No more than you did about my note at the bank when you arranged with them not to renew it. You're a friend, Stark. You and Gibson just tonight's trying to figure out how you can help me lose everything I've got. I've made you an offer for this place and you've refused. I still want it, and I'm offering again. I've got just one good leg, Stark, and I don't want to break that. So get out. You're a fool, Ware. You're a crook, Stark. You're a fool out here. Good day, Stark. Any orders, sir? Stark, this is Mr. Raleigh, my foreman. All right. Mr. Raleigh will show you the way out, Stark. You know, I can't understand where his attitude is going. He's peculiar. Has his likes and dislikes. You get along with him, don't you? Get along with anyone when I want to. I hear some pretty good things about you. Raleigh? Yeah? What thing? Well, they say you understand your business, but you get along with the man. Well, oh, guys got to make a living. That's right. Satisfied? With... What do you mean? Well, there's nothing here for anyone. This place can't last much longer. Men leaving. Well, yes. Can't expect men to stick along without pay. That's right. Especially when there are places that do pay. Making me an offer, Stark? I might. You's a good man. What's the proposition? Interested? 
might be. Just exactly what do you want, Tony? For what? Getting out of this part of the country. Someone big enough to put me out. Dorgan at least put up his hand. You wouldn't do that, would you, Stark? I don't get you. Now, well, listen. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving this part of the country. But when I be leaving, and I won't be on a horse. I get you now. There's lots of ways of leaving the country, and I'm going to arrange for you. It's different, perhaps, from your arrival in the boxcar. When you leave, it's the just. Can you climb aboard your horse, or shall I boost you? I think I'll be able to make it. Another time, another place. Any time, keep playing. Get going. Pay off, we get an extra month's pay as bonus here, and one more upon delivery of stock in Kansas City. That's a good idea. I'm in on half that 2800 any way you want it. Ha <laughs> ha, you're all right, Sue. Yeah, we're just a couple of big cattle men. Good investment for a couple of nice people. Yeah, we're all right, we are. Ah, oh, I meant the girl and her father. Oh. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't. You're just interested in the guy with a broken leg. That's right. Sure. Nobody ever fooled the Duke of Wellington. I don't know how much longer we're going to hold this bunch of cowboys. They're doing an awful lot of talking. They'll get everything that's coming in three days. Cash on the line. Well, I hope so. Well, I'm guaranteeing it. All right, I'll tell them. Now, I'll tell them tonight myself. All right. You think so, eh? Sure. They'll never start the cattle out. That bunch of cow hands want their money. Yeah. Well, they're going to get it. It's on the way. Who's money? The guy that you call the Duke of Wellington. How do you know? Oh, I have my way of finding out things. That money's going to be in the bank and will it the first thing in the morning. That gives me an idea. How good it is. Depends on how far you go. The limit. And we're set. The Duke. <laughs> Say, just who was that Duke of Wellington? That's the bird that licked the pony. Uh, well, this is the time he loses. Sorry to break in on you, Mr. Ware, but I've got to know where I stand around here. Just because I sent him the message that I wanted to see him. Just a minute. Gone over my head. Countermanded my orders before. Yesterday, made me ridiculous in front of all the men. Why, Ann? He pays no attention to anything I say. Is that part of his job? I think so. You engaged him to run things, didn't you? Yes. And I told him he'd have a free hand, didn't I? Yes. But I'd stand back of it. And he's done a good job of it, hasn't he? It's the high-handed way in which he does things that I object to. I think you're wrong, Anne. I don't. I decide to say Anytime you're right, I will. But if I were in his place, I'd be bought for nothing. Yes, I think he does. And won't interfere with what game. That's good enough for me. Thanks. Excuse me. Are you in love with him? Nope. I do. Are you sure? Well, I just like him. Are you sure of that? Well, there are a lot of things I don't like about him. And I'm not interested in anything he does or thinks. Oh. I see. I guess I'm not necessarily wrong with you. Oh, yes, you are. Just use your head. You always have, uh, up to now. Uh, let's forget it. Let. The Duke? Yeah. Went into Willard early this morning. Found? Oh, but went with him. How'd they go? The Ford said there's both fine. What time did they leave? About five. Willard's a good 45 miles from there, isn't it? 
Better than that. Thanks. Hiya, dude. What's the idea of the escort? Oh, thought you might meet up with some naughty men. Step on it, Butch. Wait a minute. Where are we going? Sit down. We don't want any trouble out of you. About six hours ago? Say. Come on, all out. Say, what's this all about? You'll find out in a minute. Come on. Let's have that bankroll. You're taking an awful chance, Dawkins. I don't think so. You asked Butch to bring you here. We broke the axle on your car. You asked to keep the money in the safe. Several of the boys heard you. Somebody's been doing a lot of thinking for you, Dawkins. Let's have that roll. Give him Raleigh's arm trick. <laughs> Want a receipt? Big sheep, man. Nice out here in the West. I think I'll bring my folks out later. Stan, don't you? You begged Butch to keep the money overnight for you. Because you were afraid you might lose it. Isn't that right? That's right. Much obliged, Butch. Oh, don't mention it. You're a smart army. Make yourself comfortable. Butch will take you on his lap and send you a few funny stories, won't you, Butch? Yeah, I'll tell him some bedtime stories. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't know one about two rats, do you? Take care of him. Sit down. So you two toss in $2,800. Pull us out of the hole. Doc and his gang can't get away with this stuff. I appreciate what you've done. You've backed me up. You know, it looks like they won't pay off in time to start that drive. Why did you cross us, Butch? Oh, Doc's a friend of mine. I get it. You've been working for him right along. Yeah. He paid off. Well, I guess I'll do my outside. Yeah, it'd be better for the rug. Don't you make any sudden break, or I'm liable to have to funk you. I'm George Wright, Stark's bookie. Yeah? I got no love for him, and I won't stand for this. What do you do with the money? Dog and put it in the safe. That's great. What can we do? You sit tight. I'll get that money the first minute I can and get word to your ranch. If you do, I'll never forget you for it. Neither will Stark or Jorgen, and I'll get a lot of satisfaction out of that. idea. What's yours? I'm here to win a bet. He claims you're Neil Craig, the rodeo champ, and I bet you wasn't. Neil Craig? That's what Lem says. Win the bet? Now be funny. Oh, so that's the way of it, is it? What do you mean? He's hard to keep track of. What is your name out here? Raleigh. Raleigh? That's a new one. <laughs> Lem says his name is Craig, but his real name is Gibson. Gibson? 
Sure, Lem used to work for his old man. Stark, partner? Yeah. You win. No Stark, that. Now that everybody knows who everybody else is, I'll get busy. to square this. Now, you men stick with these cattle. I'll send word when to start trouble with Stark. Okay. Where? Yes? I'm from the Stark plant, and I want to talk to your foreman, Mr. I'm not surprised. I'm George Wright, Stark's bookkeeper. Yeah? He and Dorgan are holding Mr. Kendall. Well, why are you here? Because I have no use for them. They held Kendall up to stop your payroll, and here it is. Here, pay the men off. Give them a bonus now. Tell them they'll get another on delivery of that stock in Kansas City. You're great on giving orders. You'll be all right when you learn to obey them. Now, that stock's in Pontine Basin. Send word over to the men right away to start driving them in. And what do you do? I'm going over and pay Mr. Stark a little visit. Drop over and maybe you'll for it. Here, take this money down to my men at the basin, pay them off, and tell them to start the drive right away. You coming with me? No, I'm going to the Stark ranch. Okay, miss. All right, Bert. Outside, keep your eye open. Okay. Hey, did you know that I'm Stark? I could tell that the way you spread it in here. Now, none of your worst facts. Who is this guy that you call for water Roy? A pal of mine. I'm asking you who he is. <laughs> I want to be around when you find out. One of our men says he knows. He says wouldn't that be funny? Not to me, it wouldn't. Where's Bert? Huh. Hey, Bert! Stark, where's Bert? You'll never see him.
doing here? Hello, sir. Well, what did you win this time? A chance to tell you what a nice, clean fighter I think your partner Stark is. Where is he? Lying on the floor, taking the count. Well, you evidently sent this just in time. I didn't send any telegram. You signed it, didn't you? I sent it. Oh, signing Stark's name, eh? Not as bad as stealing cattle. Who did that? Why, your man Friday here. What? My man where? You and Stark ran off our cattle. I didn't. Your partner did. How about it, Stark? I didn't know such thing. Just a minute. I'll give you proof where he's been trimming you for plenty. He's a liar. Who? My son? You can't give me that. I think it's a time oh. that you and I had a little talk. Now, 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 listen, uh, listen. If you want to give me a chance a minute, I can spend the whole thing. <laughs> Woo! The old man's wound up again. Gwen, I want you to meet your future sister-in-law, Miss Ware. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Bert? Oh. Hello, gang. Where were you when the cyclone hit? Been drinking again. No, but I could use a little one right now. Oh, you want to start something, <laughs> isn't it?